Hi guys, this is a quick tutorial on how to organize your Cubase session for analog summing. So here's a typical Cubase session. This is actually the start of what I used to make a template that's available at dangerousmusic.com somewhere. Kicks, snares, drums, bass, keyboards, guitars, vocals, background vocals, stuff like that. This object here all the way to the right is your main out or your monitoring outs. In your traditional Cubase session, everything is going to go to your main outs. That's the way you've been doing it until you decided to do something. We're going to change that. But this object is going to remain in your session as our main monitoring output post summing. First, you need to go to VST Connections and look at your outputs. You most likely only have two outputs right now. What you're going to do is add more outputs to represent the physical outputs of your interface. I have here a Fireface 800. Click the Add bus. Add as many buses as you think you're going to need. Click OK. The great thing about Cubase is it will automatically add physical outputs right here to your buses, which are kind of like your virtual outputs. Sometimes it's smart about it, sometimes it just does the best it can. In this case, I have a Fireface 800, so I only have really eight analog outputs available and a pair of digital outputs which I'm going to use for the monitoring. The way you have to figure it out is you have to figure out which outputs of your interface you're going to use for monitoring and assign that to main out. It's probably the way it is right now, so you should not have to touch that too much. And then name your other stems for what they're going to be and assign outputs to them. For example, the first one I'm going to call drum stem. And that's assigned, as you can see, to analog 1 and 2. The second one, you can call it perk stem. Third one, I'll call it bass stem. And then maybe guitar stem. Keyboard stem. Lead stem. Back box stem. And then an effect stem. Fair enough. Now, you have to make sure that every one of these stems is assigned to a physical output that you're interested in. In this case, say I only have a Fireface 800, so it's probably a D-Box setup. I would probably group, say, the drum stem and the perk stem. So I would assign the output of the perk stem to the same outputs, physical outputs, on the interface as the drum stem. And maybe the bass too, just because we can. And then maybe the guitar and the keyboards together on 3 and 4. And... Uh, three, four here, and then the lead on five, six, back on five, six, two, and maybe the effects on seven, eight. So I have all that set up. I'm going to go to the inputs and make sure that the stereo in object is assigned to analog input one and two, for example. In this case, I have a D box. And the output of my D-Box summing amp is going back into input 1, 2 of my Fireface. That's it. I have all my outputs set up. I have all my inputs set up. I can go back to my session. I reopen the mixer. And what I'm going to do now is show you that Cubase has created automatically objects to the right for every one of those stems. Those are abstractions of your actual physical outputs, but with an object in between, which is kind of cool. It lets you do lots of things, I'll tell you in a second. This is drum stem, we set it to output 1, 2. This is perk stem, we set it to output 1, 2 also. This is bass stem, we set it to output 1, 2. So it's an extra layer in between your music and your interface. What you're going to do next is go to all your separate tracks and assign them to the stems. For example, all those yellow things here are my effects. So I'm going to assign that to my effect stem. And this takes a second and so on and so forth. We're going to speed this up so you don't fall asleep. All right, now what you have is every single track in this session is assigned to a stem right here, which in turn is assigned to an output, which hits your analog summing device. Then it hits your input object right here to the left. So what you have left to do is create one last track down here. Go to Project, Add Track Audio. Stereo sounds like a good thing for the 21st century. 
call it, say, print track. Find it a lovely color that's like nothing else. And then assign its input to stereo in and its output to main out. This should be the only track that goes through your main outs or your monitoring outs. Every other track is routed to one of those stems, which in turn hits the D2A from your interface, which hits your analog summing device, 2-bus, D-box, whatever, which in turn hits the stereo input right here, which gets printed to this track. This is the track you listen to at all times. For you to be able to hear the whole mix, it has to be on input right here. This little button is the input button. When it's on, it lets you listen to what's coming into the input. When it's off, it lets you hear what's already recorded on the track. This is a good way to do A-B check. If you want to print some effects on this track, do not put the plugins here. Put the plugins on the input object. For example, say if I want to do some limiting, I can insert the Oxford limiter. Since the Oxford limiter is on the input object, Everything that goes through this object gets limited, and that gets printed on this track. That's a neat trick. Side note, cool little trick before we depart. Check this out. Say you only have a D-Box and a Fireface 800, like you saw me do. If you go back to VST Connections, you can see that my drum stem is to analog 1-2, perk stem analog 1-2, bass stem analog 1-2, guitar stem 3-4, etc., etc. We did that before. Now think about it this way. Say you're mixing at home and you're using your D-Box and your Fireface 800. Now you're going to go to a friend's house who has two Fireface 800s and a 2-bus LT. What you could do now is you could go here and reorganize the stems without changing your mix. All you have to do is change which physical outputs these stems are assigned to. Conversely, say if you're mixing at a friend's place who has an LT, 16-channel input, with a 16-channel interface, and you want to take that mix home on your D-Box, which only has eight channels of summing. It's not the end of the world, because with this system, all you have to do is reassign every physical output to whatever outputs you have available without changing your stemming or without changing your mix. It's really quick, it's really practical, and it's a great feature of Cubase. That's it. Pretty neat. Thanks for watching.